Really excited to showcase the latest feature for Primitive, which um, we've had for Java for runtimes for a couple years now, but we now have the ability to trace both .NET uh, core code and also the Mono runtime, which means that we can actually trace and display the memory graph for Unity projects. Um, so what I have loaded here is actually our own code. This is our code for the primitive application in Unity. I'll source code here. Um, and then uh, I have recorded a runtime that is actually going to execute the first couple of milliseconds of the code, um, which is going to be many, many hundreds of thousands of um, individual calls to methods. But it's going to show some really interesting um, setup that happens when we um, start our application up. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that here. So first thing is we have a graph um, that looks like a flame graph, um, which is effectively what it is. It's showing the depth of the call stack at uh, different moments in time. You can see the different steps uh, along the execution path. And then we actually change colors every time we change a thread. And primarily this um, application is running on a single thread, which would be the main uh, Unity UI thread. But we do actually have some files that are loaded on alternate background threads. Um, so that's really cool to see that. Um, so first thing we're going to see when this application runs is we have a logger that we set up. Um, we instantiate a um, something that uh, is, manages our uh, network connections. Um, and then we have a couple other, um, we also have a, the Photon Network Manager and all everything back here is our Photon code. Uh, we have our own class that manages our, our Photon Network. Uh, we have an event recorder uh, that's a class that can be used to record walkthroughs like what I'm doing right now. Um, we of course have a settings file um, and we can see here the awake uh, is calling on settings. It's, it's calling a static method down in the ground. Um, our main is this primitive environment object and that awake method is now called and then that awake goes to the settings uh, object and that loads a configuration file which then is going to use some code inside of our files um, system to actually read from the local uh, device storage um, to read configurations. There's another uh, configuration file, which is the connection config. That's just something that checks for background connect, um, connections to our private uh, server that, that we deploy um, when we're looking at private repositories, uh, which is a service that we offer. So we can see um, the, uh, the call structure from the main to the settings file, um, loading the environment config, loading the connection config, which also uses code inside of the files library um, to load um, some, some uh, configuration. Um, beyond that, uh, we uh, do this, um, we actually, all of our geometry is procedurally generated. So we have this thing called a polygon factory. And this thing gets to work building a whole bunch of prototype polygons. This would be things like um, circles, uh, tetrahedrons. Um, we have icosahedrons, all, all these little geometry objects that we use to populate our, our um, environment. And the polygon factory is using code back here inside this um, directory uh, namespace called shapes. And inside of here, uh, we're going to uh, create these polygons. And so one example of a polygon is a circle. Um, there's a method called draw ring that is going to use some math here um, to uh, inside of the shapes class to draw a um, mesh that actually ends up uh, forming a ring, which then could be used for all kinds of geometry. So that process runs for uh, a little while. Notice we're only at step number 25 here in this program. Uh, and this, this goes on for hundreds of thousands of steps just for the first few milliseconds of the program. So here we can see the um, a secondary thread, which is actually doing some background file loading. It happens very quickly, and then we're back to the main thread. We think uh, people are going to get a lot of value out of it, um, being able to see their Unity runtime code, because it actually lets you tell the story of what's happening inside of your application. So very, very powerful feature that we've had for a while for Java. We're now bringing it to C Sharp, both .NET CLR, and then also um, the Mono runtime now, which allows you to look at Unity traces. So it's a very, very exciting feature. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting it out so people can uh, try it and look at their own code.